Would you like to know more about how pharma manufacturing works? Every month we bring you an insider conversation with our experts here at Lonza, with our partners and leaders in the industry. Hi, my name is Martina Hestericová and this is A View On, a podcast brought to you by Lonza. Chemotherapy is the first-line treatment for most types of cancer. However, one of the major challenges with this approach is specificity. Chemotherapy targets both cancer and healthy cells alike, and patients often suffer severe side effects from the treatment. But a new class of therapies called antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs, can target tumors much more precisely. They harness the power of antibodies that can recognize specific markers on the surface of cancer cells. And for this reason, they're becoming increasingly prominent in the oncology landscape. In fact, there are currently more than 600 biological molecules in the market, and ADCs represent more than 45% of the entire bioconjugate pipeline. 13 years ago, there was only one clinically used ADC. If we fast forward to today, we currently have 11 approved ADCs showing high market potential. But manufacturing such complex and highly potent treatments presents a unique set of challenges. Very few companies can tackle all of them with an end-to-end -end solution. The complexity of manufacturing ADCs leads many companies to outsource their production, and Lonza currently manufactures the majority of ADC therapeutics. For many companies, the collaboration simplifies the process and streamlines the supply chain. Over the years, Lonza has gained a unique experience in supporting these therapies from development stages to the market launch. This is why I'm excited to welcome Ivan Bertaliotti and Laurence Bonafus in today's episode to talk about the manufacturing challenges and commercial aspects of antibody drug conjugates. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Lorenz. Welcome to the podcast. It's great to have you both here. Hi, Martina. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, Martina. This is also a pleasure to be here. As their name suggests, antibody drug conjugates consist of three parts. An antibody, a cytotoxic drug, and the linker that covalently binds these two together. This approach combines the targeted delivery of the antibody with the cancer-killing power of the cytotoxic drug that would be otherwise too potent to be used on its own. These molecules were designed to act like Trojan horses, able to deliver their cargo only to target cells while sparing healthy ones. But it makes me wonder, is the antibody really representing the wooden horse used to enter the city of Troy? So, Lorenz, you have been working with bioconjugates for almost 10 years now and currently work as an associate director and head of manufacturing science and technologies in bioconjugates. Could you tell us what role does the antibody play? Every part of the ADC uh, is, uh, is important. An ADC can, can be seen as a, a vehicle that allows the selective delivery of a potent payload into the cancer cell. In particular, there are specific receptors that are uh, either preferentially or exclusively expressed on the surface of the cancer cells. And the antibodies are designed to uh, recognize and to enable a high specific binding to those antigens. And after binding, the, the ADCs is internalized into the tumor cell to deliver the, the potent cytotoxic agent. I like that you mentioned the word delivery. How is the cytotoxic drug released when it enters the cancer cell? And how does it actually kill the cancer cell? To simplify a little bit, once the ADC is internalized, the payload is disconnected from the antibody and can get into action. So the free payload interacts with the cellular machinery, and this directly leads to cell damage and death through uh, its particular mechanism of action, like DNA cleavage or uh, tubulin binding. Ivan, so as the Senior Director of Commercial Development of Bioconjugates at Lonza, I want to ask you if it is possible to further improve the modality, say by focusing only on one key element of the intermolecule? Absolutely. That's the ultimate purpose. 
I think uh, if you find it, a new protein which can uh, have a targeted approach, that is definitely something which is interesting. And then to combine it with different mechanisms, how to then have an effect on a specific cell in the body. So this opens up a, a wide range of different uh, concepts to treat a different disease. You can imagine that over the coming years, we will see a lot of new drugs, new drugs in the preclinical stage, and then we expect that these drugs can be further advanced and into the clinic and ultimately into the market to make them available to the a lot of patients desperately waiting for these new treatments. The cytotoxic drug sounds quite dangerous on its own. What is the containment strategy when synthesizing these payloads? How does the process look like from a real-life perspective? So the payloads for agencies are indeed cytotoxic and, and their handling needs a, a dedicated asset and overhaul safety concepts and, and cultures. So it's not dangerous if all the measures are put in place to prevent the substance to be in contact with, uh, with the operators and, and vice versa. So indeed, we are manufacturing ADCs in special rooms, so there are uh, several levels of containment, and usually those toxic powders are handled in an isolator. I see. So the science and safety of ADCs are closely linked to their manufacturing. Laurence, what can you tell us about the entire manufacturing process of bioconjugate? So the manufacturing of ADC drug substance is somehow magic in the sense that it enables the world of biologics to, to meet the world of small molecules. And this is essentially why a bioconjugation asset is so unique. From one hand, one needs a dedicated infrastructure with an adequate containment or the handling of highly potent drug uh, linker powder. And on the other hand, uh, large volumes of antibody or ADC solution uh, have to be handled in a microbial control environment. And this is true that the, the manufacturing of ADCs have significantly evolved uh, over the last past 10 years. And they can now be produced either in stainless steel equipment or using single-use technology. Just to give you an idea, the manufacturing scale under GMP can vary from a relatively small scale of about 100 gram up to 5 kilogram of dry weight antibody. Having worked in an organic synthesis lab myself in my earlier days, I can imagine this being done on a small scale. So you will take what, like a 50 milliliter flask, put in a steering bar, run the reaction, and then you would purify it, right? But the commercial scale is enormous compared to this tiny setup. I wonder how would you manage scaling this up to, say, five kilograms? So usually you start with a milligram scale in the laboratory. And our work at Lonza is to develop the process in order to ensure that it's scalable. So I think this is uh, one of our core competencies to, to develop processes in such a way that uh, we can manufacture multiple grams of drug linkers. And um, I mean, changing the process, uh, yes, to make it scalable, but essentially the unit operation will remain the same. And this is where Lonza steps in as a contract manufacturing and development organization that provides services to customers to manufacture and scale-up production for our partners. Do you create the scale-up strategy for the customer or do they come already with this knowledge to you? I would say that everything is possible. The process can be transferred to Lonza in a pretty final way and we just need to make, uh, let's say, a fine-tuning. In other cases, uh, we also often receive processes that have been run only at few milligram scale. And in that case, a very powerful process development and process uh, improvement has to be uh, implemented. And how long does this process usually take? One usually comes at least 15 months from tech transfer to GMP manufacturing. Of course, the product has to go through all the clinical phase and this takes several years. Um, nonetheless, once the process development and process optimization are completed, uh, it essentially takes two to three days to manufacture an ADC batch. Mm -hmm. This is a relatively straightforward process. Uh, however, end of manufacturing is, of course, not the end of the story. 
for instance, once the batch is completed, QA and QC batch release activities are started, and this is followed by the shipment uh, to the DP manufacturing site. I see. And sure, quality assurance and control must be really important. What are some of the biggest challenges, though, when it comes to manufacturing ADCs? I assume one needs to be really mindful of the entire supply chain, right? Yes, of course. So the, the manufacturing of ADCs is challenging for several reasons, but let's focus on the most relevant one. So as I previously mentioned, a special attention is required from a safety and a quality perspective. In particular, the handling of those uh, highly toxic drug linkers and the manufacturing in a bio-burden control environment are key topics related to the manufacturing of ADC. And as you just correctly mentioned, the proper management of the whole supply chain, from the ordering of the raw materials for the antibody and the drug linker manufacturing, until the ADC DP fill finish is a long journey. And this challenge can only be overcome by having a detailed understanding of all the material supply and demand at all steps and by having a high level of integration. So basically, simplification and integration of all activities is highly beneficial and can even be considered as one of the key success factors, especially to achieve tight timelines towards registration. Yeah, now that we are on the topic of drug registration, Ivan, what's your view on the current bioconjugate market? Yeah, so we identified uh, around 600 different molecules in development and in commercial. So that is a pretty nice uh, market. And 46% of that market uh, are ADCs, which are typically used in oncology and uh, treatments for cancer. So we've got a very interesting market, a market which uh, still grows. And we see beyond the ADCs, the antibody drug conjugates, that different molecules are now conjugated. So peptides, polymers, oligonucleotides, polysaccharides, just to mention a few of them. There is positive development regarding new targets, new payloads, new bioconjugation technologies with new mechanisms of action, reduced off-target activity, improved therapeutic window. With that, the field is interesting from a science perspective, provides purpose and remains exciting. In 2019, we experienced something really unique in the market, because in that year, three ADCs were approved. And this came after a 10-year-long period when only a few made it through clinical trials. Do you expect the process to speed up in the coming years? As you currently mentioned, there was many approvals in the last past months, which shows the importance of this kind of uh, compounds. There was definitely a very nice trend. Four additional ADCs were approved, meanwhile. We expect over the coming years that additional ADCs will make it to the market with exciting also partly new technologies with uh, maybe less side effects. So, so more to come in the, in the future. And what about the applications of ADCs? So our listeners may already be familiar with antibody biopolymer conjugates that we talked about with Victor Perlroth from Codex Sciences that are used in ophthalmology. But ADCs are often mentioned also in conjunction with cancer treatments. Are there any applications beyond these two fields? It's really a very wide field of different modalities you can think of. We see today that also antibiotics, oligonucleotides, peptides, even steroids are conjugated with, uh, with such proteins creating completely new mechanisms to treat uh, different diseases, also beyond cancer treatment. A very interesting example is uh, antibody oligonucleotide conjugates. So that is for the treatment of, for example, muscular dystrophy, which is just one example which gives an indication of what, the, let's say, the potential of such uh, novel modalities. Now, Ivan, I want to ask about the bioconjugation facility in VISP in Switzerland. You manufacture all three components at the same place. I wonder, from the commercial perspective, what is the advantage of such a setup? It's really unique what we have at Lonza VISP. The advantage is to, to bring all under one roof. I think with that, you have the unique opportunity to reduce complexity dramatically. So that is related to contracting, planning, 
communication, optimize timelines with parallel activities are possible. Can you save a lot of time having it all under one roof? Yeah, if you look on the timelines needed to bring something from a preclinical stage into the clinic, we talk about a process which typically would need around two years. It can also go up to 30 months. So if you now start to overlap certain activities, you can dramatically reduce that timeline. So we have already seen examples where, where it can go down to 15 to 16 months. So that's a substantial decrease in the time to bring a drug into the clinic. And then obviously through the whole clinical development program, commercialization, additional time can be taken out, additional risk can be taken out and Obviously, that offers a huge, huge benefit. Could you tell me a little bit more about the process of bringing new customers into the bioconjugation facility? I mean, does the process differ depending on the size of the company? There is not one size fits all. It's not just one business uh, model which we offer. So we we try to customize our business model to the, the customer we have concepts where we offer just capacity in, in our CDMO models. Other models, especially for drugs, which need huge capacity, there it's a possibility to build something also dedicated. Then have, the customer has the full control about the capacity and also is in a unique position to have a lot of expertise to bring these assets on stream in a rather short time. It's not a matter of... Uh having a, a small or a big company as a customer, we just always try to find the best compromise or the best solution for, uh, for our customers. Every product matters, and uh, we want to help our customers to, to bring their product uh, on the market. It's, it's maybe worth to mention that indeed we have uh, facilities to dedicate it to one project and one customer, but we can also offer uh, to manufacture uh, ADCs in a multi-purpose facility. Two episodes ago, we spoke to Yvette Stallwood from Lonza about the early development services offering and early de-risking and how is it important to assess the manufacturability, developability, and really the risk of immunogenicity of molecules very, very early on. I wonder, can this be also applied to bioconjugates? What you have seen for proteins, maybe in the past, is exactly the same topic also for the bioconjugation. So as already mentioned before, you need all the different elements. Obviously, you need to work on the developability, monogenicity, on the protein part for a bioconjugate. And then you need to bring that together with the bioconjugation aspect, the architecture, and then also with the payload. And all these elements need to come together to create a new drop. So Lonza has established now a new offering towards the end of 2021 to develop these new exciting drops uh, from the beginning. I think we can all agree that bioconjugates have an enormous potential to improve cancer treatments and with fewer side effects for the patients. We are to experience a great shift towards these modalities in the near future. I'm sure of that. Thank you both for joining us today and sharing your view on antibody drug conjugates. Thanks, Martina. Thank you. And that's all for today from View On. We will be back next month with more exciting science and technology stories. Thanks for joining us and bye for now.